Hello everybody and welcome to the 11th machine learning with scikit-learner sklearn tutorial video uh, with investing and all of that. Uh, some of you may be actually joining us right on this video. Uh, the previous videos and the rest of this playlist are about using machine learning with scikit-learn and linear SVM for investing using fundamental uh, investing uh, character or fundamental characteristics of companies as uh, features. But I imagine some people are mostly just interested in seeing a very basic linear S, uh, SVC rather example. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to be using the following things. We're going to import NumPy as NP. We're going to be using NumPy uh, for basically converting to a NumPy array. Um, I, I believe that will be the only use of NumPy. Actually, we'll have a couple others because NumPy arrays have some characteristics basically uh, that we wish to utilize. Moving right along, uh, we're also going to import matplotlib.pyplot <clears throat> as plt. We're going to do from sklearn, and we're going to import svm for a support vector machine. And then we're also going to go from matplotlib, import style, style. And then we're going to do uh, style.use, and we're going to be using ggplot. And this is just to make the graph look a little nicer than usual. Um, that's that. So let's consider the following. Let's say we've got um, you know, a machine learning example, and we have two features that we want to consider. Um, sorry about that. My dog is shaking. Um, so we, we have two features. Let's say you've got x's and you have y's. and in that you've got, let's say your x values, uh, and really x and y are separate features. You're going to see that later on we actually combine x and y um, to be an uppercase x is what you'll normally see. And usually that contains all features. So uh, the x parameter is going to contain, let's say, a 1, 5, a 1 1.5, 8, 1, and a 9. And then the y uh, is going to, let's say, contain 2a, 1.8, 8, 0 0.6, and 11. So real quick, let's do plot.scatter and then plt.show. And uh, we'll see our scatter plot real quick. Oops. Um, plt. <laughs> Duh. Okay, uh, scatter x of y, rather. And here we have a scatter plot, and you know, with our eyeballs, we can kind of see, okay, how might we um, separate these things? Well, we would do probably a line, you know, a nice diagonal line from here down to here, something like that. Um, that seems to make the most sense. Uh, but how do we do this, you know, with a, an SVM, uh, specifically a linear SVC? Um, so the first thing that we would do, first of all, is we need to convert this into um, a NumPy array, and, and generally the way that you're going to actually see this is you'll have a list of features, and then you will have the answer for your label. So you would have something like this. Um, well, first let's make the the list. So <clears throat> we've got a list, and it'll be a list of lists. And the first one would be basically these values, like you know the the values and their corresponding. So the x and the y, right? So we would have one two, right, for the first value of x and the first value of y. So you'd have one two. And then we would have, and let's go ahead and just enter down, um, and let's just make a few real quick. Um, so we had one, two, then we had a 5, 8, then we had a 1.5, 1 1.8, 1 uh, then we had 8, 8, so 8, 8, uh, then we had a 1, 0 0.6, then we had a 9, oops, that's a... Uh, list there 9 11 right so those are all our coordinates and then what we would do is we would say capital X equals that and then we end up actually converting this to an NP uh, array so numpy array and that converts this to numpy array and since we kind of built this a little different that we'll just have those over so now we're gonna do uh, we're gonna label these um, and so the way that we would do that is we would say y equals and we can see we could see with our eyeballs that those um, you know when we scatter plotted these things so like let's do it real quick we could see that we would want to group these and we would want to group these well what is the fundamental characteristic of these two uh, things well this one has lower numbers this one has higher numbers simple enough 
Um, so we close this, and we would we would label these ourselves, and you label the pair, right? So one, two, let's say those are zeros. Five, eight would be a one. 1 1.5, uh, 1 1.8 we call a zero. Eight, eight we would call a one. One and 0.6 is zero. Nine and 11, a one. So now we've got our x and our y, and what we want to do next is we're going to create our classifier. So uh, we're going to say CLF for classifier equals SVM for support vector machine dot SVC. Uh, and then we're going to specify our kernel as being linear, so linear SVC. And then we specify C. Now C is like this kind of a... Uh, I hate to say magical number, but that, it might as well be. Um, there's a lot of uh, debate and study around machine learning, and there's a lot of unknown and really best kind of called experimentation um, around machine learning, especially support vector machines and all that. So we're, I'm not going to touch too much on C for now, and if you want to learn more about C, kind of follow along this series and you'll see. <laughs> Uh, how bad my jokes are. Anyways, moving right along, we've got C, we'll just say is equal to 1.0. You actually don't have to define C at all. That is the, the default parameter, so it doesn't really matter. Now we're gonna go CLF for classifier, and we're gonna do dot fit. And we fit, uh, your, you fit features to their labels. Um, so Y was the labels, and fit was the features. Now we have two features here, right? Uh, but you can have really an unlimited amount of features. So what we'll end up doing or what we're doing in this, this series is we have uh, probably something like 30 features. Um, so anyway, you end up with quite a few. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and uh, because we're going to, from here we could actually do classifier.fit x, y, and then we could do something very simple. We could say, um, once we've done that, we're ready to predict. So we could do something as simple as this, clf.predict and you could predict now a set of features. So what if we predicted a 0 0.5807.76? Our goal is that this will return a zero because it's a lower number. So let's go ahead and print out that. We'll save and run that. Uh, we're still graphing that other thing. Anyway, this was the prediction. Indeed a zero. Very nice. Uh, what if we did 10 and 10, right? So 10.58, 10.76. Let's go ahead and run that and see what the prediction is. And it's predicting it as a one. So it's that simple uh, once you've converted everything into numbers anyways. Uh, again, if you want to learn how to, how to do that, um, definitely check out the series. As well as normalizing the data and actually scaling the data, that's pretty important. Turns out there's a really easy way to scale it at least, but as you'll find if you are following along in this series, um, actually just acquiring the data is kind of the biggest task. So. Moving on now, let's say you want to uh, graph the data just because you want to. Um, so the way that you would do this is you want to get uh, the coefficient. Uh, and what this is is like the, you know, what, what happens is you've got this hyperplane you know, vector of coordinates. And this is pretty much what's going to determine our classes, right? Because at some point you have to draw the line literally and, and figuratively. Um, and this is usually referred to as W. So we're going to say W equals CLF dot coefficient um, underscore, and then we'll say zero here. Uh, and then uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is like zero. Um, this gives us a few values. Uh, so let's go ahead and just print W really quick. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this above code. This is the original code that we had, so we don't have to keep showing that. And so here's your coefficients. Okay, so these are what's going to be used to create our uh, our line here in a second. So now I'm going to just kind of create some space here. Um, so after uh, defining W, we're going to define A, which is you know most most usually referred to as a learning rate and all of that. But we're actually just simply using this for a line creation. But um, A is going to equal uh, negative W zero divided by uh, W one. Um, that's just a simple, you know, textbook algorithm for creating this. Then we're going to say xx. This is the x of our line, basically equals mp dot lin space. And here we just make it a range, uh, you know, of our data. So typically you could say, you know, the max and min is literally the max and min of our features. We could say something like that. Um, but we already know the maximum would be zero. 
or I mean the minimum would be zero and then the maximum we would say is really like 11, right? But we'll put 12. Um, so zero to 12, we'll say. Um, and then for y, y, we can have a, a simple algorithm uh, It's a times x, x minus clf dot intercept uh, underscore zero divided by w one. Um, again, a massive, most of what you will do in machine learning will not involve any of this. I'm just showing you so you can create a graph. People like to see graphs, uh, but generally you're going to have too many features to graph. So you'll never see a graph or you, you'll rarely see graphs in, in machine learning, especially with support vector machines, unless you have three, three or fewer features. Anyway, that's that. Um, and then, so now we can actually plot this line. So we, we can call this H0 and that is plt dot plot. We plot X, X, Y, Y. Uh, we plot it as a black line, so we use K for black and then a, a dash for line, and then label, uh, and this is non-weighted uh, divide. We'll just call it div. Um, and um, we'll leave weights aside for now, um, but there's also a way to create weights, and you use those to even better classify your data. Some data sets are gonna require that you, you weight things. So anyways, um, now we're ready to go ahead and plot again. So, so now um, what you would typically see here is this fancy NumPy code here. So you would get plt.scatter and then we can do x, co oops, x colon comma zero with <laughs> and then so that will be the, the first -th element or the first element rather not the first -th. Uh and then you, we can have the x colon, comma, first -th element, so the second element, right? So the, these are the zeros, so the first numbers, and then the ones are these, okay? So that's what we're scattering. And then we can do some more trickery and say C for color equals Y, and that will allow us to color the plots differently according to their group. And then we'll go ahead and just do a plt.show. And in fact, since we gave a label to our uh, line there, we can do plt.legend. Save and run that. And now you can see we have um, a, a nice little divider here. It looks like we're covering over one of, there's our other dot. Uh, so anyway, here's our blue class and here is our red class and here is our fancy divider. Um, so that's that, it's pretty simple. Um, as you guys saw, I mean the really, the, the major part of a support vector machine is basically none of this and you basically that so we'll comment all that out and this is really the the meat of our svm right our support vector machine specifically linear svc really not much to it right i mean this is pretty simplistic code there's a lot of customization there's a lot of little things that we could change add and remove uh things like c a lot of this is actually experimental and i would even go so far as to say machine learning is almost like an art form um, and it isn't just the computer even even if you have something that's unsupervised there is a lot of um, experimentation and the scientist actually performing everything needs to understand um, a lot about how machine learning actually works so it can't all be the computer but this is a pretty simplistic example of how easy it can be the only thing the only major thing I just want to bring up real quick before we you know cut this off is this is generally um, not best practice you want to scale your data and generally people like to scale their data between negative one and one some people do if it if there's like a really high degree of variance you could scale it between negative five and five or something like that it's okay but generally you want to scale all of your data to kind of normalize it and that gives you better results we haven't done that here but we will be doing that in this tutorial with our exact actual uh, investing example but i wanted to keep things as simple as possible when we're first running through linear svc just so everyone kind of understands the main objectives of gathering data and feeding it through linear svc or uh, a support vector machine so anyways that's it for this video if you guys have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions and the donations. And until next time.